What is going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our five-minute review playlist. Today's topic is a subtype of nephrotic syndrome known as membranous nephropathy. If you look at it from an internal medicine standpoint, it's a nephrotic syndrome. If you look at it from a histopathological standpoint, it's a membranous nephropathy because it involves the glomerular basement membrane. This ugly disease is associated with hepatitis, especially hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C. It's correlated with lupus and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Also sometimes syphilis, malaria, and schistosomiasis. This is my 5-minute review playlist. And please watch these three videos before this one. Alright, let's review. Why does my patient have hypoproteinemia? Well, it could be your patient is not eating protein, called protein malnutrition or quash your core. It could be that the patient cannot make protein, such as chronic liver disease or cirrhosis. Or it could be that the patient is wasting protein, wasting it in the poop or wasting it in the pee. How does the gut waste protein? It could be malabsorption syndrome, blame the intestine, or it could be a protein-losing gastropathy or menetrius disease, blame the stomach. If it's a kidney problem, this is a nephrotic syndrome. All of these things will lead to what? Edema. A good kidney is like good colander. It should not let any debris pass through. But a kidney with nephrotic syndrome is like a horrible colander. Look at all of this protein in the urine. Yuck. Nephrotic syndrome, my kidney is wasting my protein in the urine, especially albumin. And without albumin, I have no oncotic pressure. Fluid will keep leaking outside the vessel and it's going to accumulate in the interstitial fluid and that's edema. In the simplest form, nephrotic syndrome is loss of protein in the urine. Nephritic syndrome is loss of blood in the urine. Let's get more sophisticated. Nephrotic syndrome has four main features. Hyperproteinuria, hypoproteinemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. These proteins are being lost in the urine. And of these proteins, they include what? Antithrombin-3. When you lose the antithrombin, you get what? Thrombosis especially if you have membranous nephropathy. In fact, membranous nephropathy is the nephrotic syndrome that causes clotting the most. Okay, medicosis. So, membranous nephropathy is a nephrotic syndrome. I'm losing the antithrombin-3 in the urine. That's why I'm getting thrombosis. Which part of the body is the most vulnerable to thrombosis? The answer is the renal freaking vein. How come? I don't get it. All right, think about it. Blood goes to the kidney normally via the renal artery. Yeah, that's right. And then this kidney has nephrotic syndrome. You're losing your protein in the urine. All of this antithrombin-3 has just left the body and into the toilet. All right. After this, where does the rest of the blood go? Well, it goes to the peritubular capillaries, which will take it to the renal vein. So the renal vein is the vessel in your body with the least amount of antithrombin-3, therefore with the highest risk of thrombosis. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What are the histopathological subtypes of nephrotic syndrome? Minimal change of disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, which is today's topic, diabetes, mellitus, amyloidosis. In other words, the young, the addict, the thick glomerular basement membrane, the sweet, the green apple. Nephrology has a certain lingo, you have to master it. What does focal mean? Affecting only few glomeruli. What does diffuse mean? Affecting all the glomeruli. What is today's topic? Membranous nephropathy. What does nephropathy mean? Pathology of the kidney. What does membranous mean? Involving the glomerular basement membrane. Other textbooks will describe this disease as diffuse membranous, which means it's going to affect the glomerular basement membrane of all your glomeruli. Speaking of an ugly disease. In this disease, I have a very thick glomerular basement membrane. As you know, your blood is made of plasma and blood cells, especially RBCs. Where does your urine come from? It's a filtrate of the plasma. 
here is your renal artery, here's your kidney. Okay, plasma, can I go to the kidney? Yes, you can. How about red blood cells? No, you will not go to the kidney. How about uh, proteins? Normally, you should not go to the kidney, you should not end up in the urine. But in nephrotic syndrome, proteins will end up in the urine, and that's a disease. Here is your afferent arterial, which is a descendant of the renal artery. For the plasma to go from here to here, you have to pass through three layers. Number one, the capillary endothelium, which is fenestrated. Number two, glomerular basement membrane, which is negatively charged. And number three, the podocytes, which has feed processes, which contain slit pores in between. Podo comes from French lupiale, which means feet, because it has feet processes. Normally, proteins should not end up in the urine for two reasons. Number one, fenestrations are narrow. These holes are narrow, and that's not the most important reason. Number two is the most important reason. Glomerular base membrane is negatively charged. Proteins are also negatively charged. Negative is going to repel negative. The problem in membranous nephropathy is that you have immune complex deposition in the glomerular basement membrane. This is toast. What do you mean by an immune complex? I mean an antigen and an antibody hugging each other. Where did they decide to hug each other? In your freaking glomerular basement membrane. Just underneath the podocyte. So we call it subepithelial because the podocyte represents the epithelium. Now you know why this is thick. Here's your kidney under electron microscopy. This is the endothelium, and then there is the basement membrane, followed by the epithelium. Why do we call this disease membranous nephropathy? Because you'll find antigen-antibody deposition in the membrane, specifically underneath the epithelium. What do you mean by the epithelium? The podocytes. And when you have deposition under the epithelium, what do you call it? I call it subepithelial. These deposits are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, giving you something called spike and dome appearance, some zigzag action. Minimal change of disease was discussed before. Pause and review. Just remember, the patient was younger. The prognosis is excellent. It was associated with Hodgkin's. The response to steroids was magnificent. And there was no deposition whatsoever. Focal segmental was discussed before. The patient was older. The disease was much worse. The prognosis was much worse. The response to steroid was dismal. In the vast majority of cases, there was no deposition. Focal segmental is associated with heroin and HIV and a virus known as Parvo B19. Now let's talk about membranes. The patient is older. The response to steroid is not so good. This disease is notorious for causing all kinds of clots, including renal vein thrombosis, DVT, which can become pulmonary embolism. Also, the renal vein thrombosis is in the renal vein. Before you know it, it can go to the inferior vena cava, then the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and then it's in the lungs. This membranous nephropathy has serum antiphospholipase A2 receptor antibody, or PLA2R antibody. If you do immunofluorescence, you'll see granular subepithelial immune complexes. What are they made of? C3 and IgG. C3 is the complement because the MAC, which is part of the complement, is attacking the podocytes. That's why you have proteinuria. You're losing albumin and globulin. That's why it's non-selective proteinuria. Membranous nephropathy usually happens suddenly if it's idiopathic or it can happen secondary to other diseases. What kind of diseases? Syphilis, malaria, schistosomiasis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cancers, Hodgkin's, Captopril, gold therapy, penicillamine, non steroidals, these are your medications, and never ever forget lupus. Lupus can hammer your kidney. Lupus can cause a nephrotic syndrome, such as membranous nephropathy, or a nephritic syndrome, as we will discuss later. Pause and review. Pause and review. If you want to master renal physiology and learn about the proximal tubule loop of Henley distal tubule and how they handle stuff, check out my website, medicosisperfectionaries.com. I have a course on renal physiology. It comes with 10 videos. I also have another course for acid-base imbalance, 30 videos, the best discussion on the planet. Get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code KIDNEY. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. 
here go to my website download my premium courses man this five minute review playlist never takes five minutes always takes longer sorry but this is medicosis perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense